Well, now that the excitement is over, that was undoubtedly a lovely picture. I'm sure that the people around here in that time, and that they were really and truly intrigued to see again something that really happened years ago all along the line. Well, now that it has gone, uh, you're in, uh, dealing with this here. Well, uh, could you give me some idea, just a matter of interest, what is your ultimate aim? I see with all the carriages you have, you to restore them, etc. But when they are restored, like, is it just something we'd say for a tourist to come out of Galway and see it, or what? Uh, could you give me some little rundown on your uh, ultimate aim? Surely, Michael. What we hope to do is eventually to run a full service during the summer between a time and an opera nine miles away and run it along the lines of the very successful preserved lines in England, like the Severn Valley and the North Yorkshire Moors. It's doubtful whether we'd ever be in a position to offer commuter service uh, to local people in Loch Ray, and it's doubtful whether it would pay its way because they didn't really support the line when they had the train in the first place. So we envisage it purely as a steam-hauled tourist attraction running from May to September during the summer months, and uh, available to anyone who wants to use it, whether they be railway enthusiasts, members of the general public, local people in Loch Ray or whoever. And we'll be using these carriages and more modern stock, which we hope to acquire from CIE over the next year or so. Well, I'm looking at those, you see, I happen to be have some knowledge of this kind of work. Well, it would appear to me that it will take quite a good deal of money to put those carriages in what I assume working condition, etc., etc., you know? It will indeed, Michael, but uh, what we hope these carriages is to use them more as service vehicles for the association and for our staff. This one that you see beside me here now is number 1927, which was built by the Great Southern and Western in the year 1907. And it is being used as a staff carriage for our working members here at Atayman. We can sleep in it and eat in it. It's got eight single bedrooms and a large dining kitchen area, as you can see there. And it's going to be used from about May onwards to accommodate people here at weekends. Nobody has slept in it yet, but we eat in it every Saturday. And uh, it was last used by the Signal Electric Department and CIE as a sleeping and eating van for their workers, and we intend to use it for the same purpose. We don't envisage it ever carrying passengers or running regularly up and down the branch, but more or less as a dormitory coach parked at a particular place on the line for service purposes. Well, no hope of it being kind of a mini hotel for weekends now and again. No, I don't think so, because what we aim to do is we aim to provide catering facilities for our passengers. And uh, as you may have seen up there, we have a 1964-built uh, kitchen car I saw the built by CIE, car, yes. which used to work on the radio trains and on the pilgrimage trains. And we would uh, seat the people in an adjoining tabled coach and bring the meals through to them from there. And operate a, a lunch service maybe on a Sunday, something similar to the Seven Valley do on their line with the Great Western set. And further down here now in the county, do we have a uh, number 247 which was built in 1899 by the Great Southern and Western Railway in whose headquarters were an inch core and to whose main station was in Houston Station. Now we'll be using that for model, model railway purposes and we envisage this year to have a working model of the Loch Ray line uh, as the basis of our layout. We would envisage that this, that this would be open to the public, uh, at a subscription, of course. Yes, naturally. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, the the um, we we so far we have we have this coach, and we can thank the West Rex people for this coach because the West of Ireland Model Railway Club was formed first in uh, approximately well, they would say it was how would it be? It would have been about a year ago and we were running around looking for premises and coaches and everything else pre premises for ourselves and finally Westrail gave us this coach and you know right now we're, we 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 right now our people people will be helping rest Westrail clean their coaches and they'll help us clean ours and we can put something into it then but as I said before I'd say what the coaches themselves mostly want is paint well a paint scraper paint washing powder or whatever it may be super 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 brand day or however you want to call, yeah. call it and scrubbing brushes because they are basically sound general restoration they're cleaned up clean general that would be the idea yes. up. well uh, you did somebody you mentioned something about that if anybody had any material etc etc well yes they could it would uh, could you not get trying and have that advertised uh, in some better way like for example i fear certain things advertised by gay bodman and various things like that you know well, we like have been at the Gable, we had been at the Gable, but so far 
we we haven't met with an awful lot of success. success. Well, I only mentioned that like as a kind of um, we, you know, to bring before the public what would be necessary, because I'm sure there are thousands of people that would love to contribute in some small way, you see, to this type of thing, because it's really something that was gone. And I personally am delighted to see some restoration taking place. But uh, another question I'd like to ask is, when you have it, on these trips you have now, the, so you're trained today from Mullingar down here, is that right? That's correct. Well, now, it's a pity, you see, that you didn't stop here in that time and say on the way in, and something that you could collect passengers at a normal, nominal fee, like maybe three pounds or something like that. There's no point in making it too big, you see. But, and that they could be a few hours in Galway and come back again on it, you see, on its way back to Dublin. I think to serve a dual property would also raise some funds like that. Well, the, uh, the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland are an all-Ireland body running steam tours on the main lines of CIE Northern Ireland Railways. And they ran this trip today. And uh, we invited them to come out here and visit our depot during the afternoon, as they have done indeed in the past two years before our stock arrived. And we have a very good relationship with the RPSI. I myself am a member of it and was a member of it before this association was ever formed. Yeah. And have worked on those engines in Mullingar. And they're always willing to listen to our recommendations and suggestions. So it's a possibility for next year that we might get them to stop here on the way into Galway. People coming from Dublin and Mullingar who want to get out here can get out. And other people who want to go on into Galway can go in for the afternoon and can be brought out again on the return trip in the evening. And still then continue to run the afternoon trip out for Galway City people just to come out for a short spin and take their children who've never seen a steam train out on the line. I should also mention that in relation to the materials which you mentioned earlier on, we do appeal to our members in the journal to uh, help donate materials and if any of them are working in industry or in uh, builders providers or anything to get onto their bosses to try and provide stuff and we have been very lucky so far in that we've had a number of industrial sponsorships from Uni Locomotive in Galway who sponsored the move of the stock from Mullingar from Schlegel and Loch Ray who've given us a donation towards the upkeep of the site and from numerous other companies Thermo King and Galway have given us sponsorship towards the bus which you see parked outside in the forecourt of the station and we are always uh, grateful to these uh, industries and companies who sponsor us and I would hope as carriage and wagon officer that this will continue for a long time as materials as you know are expensive to buy and we need paints, timbers, glass and numerous other items in very large quantities and it's always a job for me to keep the materials flowing in time for the workers. We have workers coming here every Saturday willing to work and it's my job to make sure that there are materials and paints and things here. And on that question, I should point out to you, carriage number 464A, or to give it its original number, Great Southern and Western number 892, the rather decrepit-looking green carriage there, which will be restored from June onwards by a team of ANCO apprentices who are coming out here <coughs> on an ANCO youth employment scheme. And they're going to work here an eight-hour day, five-day week, under a trained, supervised foreman. And they are going to restore that carriage completely free to us. All we have to provide for them are the materials. Now that's going to cost us a lot of money and we will be appealing to our members and have done so in the latest issue of our magazine to come up here and support us and provide tools and materials which the ANCO apprentices can give. And we're delighted to be able to offer an opportunity to the young people of this area to give them employment because I know myself what it's like to be unemployed. As a school teacher I know a lot of kids are, are leaving school with no hope of jobs. And I'm delighted that we're able to create 10 jobs for six months here and we feel very privileged and very proud of this fact. Now, at the moment, isn't there a, a levy on the people at large, 1% or 2% about um, youth employment? It's 1% youth employment oh. levy, yeah. yeah. There is indeed. Uh, well, now, can anything at all be cut out of that? For this scheme, is it? Well, yes, well, for this scheme. I mean, it is, it is supposed to be for youth employment. Well, then, in what way is it worked? I have some idea that there was some comment there recently that the half the money wasn't used. Well, I couldn't tell you exactly how they spend the money for the 1% levy. I know I pay it myself anyway when, yes. I, when I get my paycheck. But uh, it's a state agency, ANCO, that's running this youth employment scheme here. So I would hope that the money that you and I and everyone else pays in taxes is going into this project and projects like this. And ANCO and Galway and the National Manpower Service are very, very enthusiastic about this project because they say it's completely different from anything they've ever done before or are ever likely to do again. Well, and, would, you uh, not agree, uh, would you not agree that it would be worthwhile for to question ANCO about that 1% levy that's being paid to verify that uh, it is being put to some use like this, etc., etc.? 
Possibly, but I don't see... Well, uh, just a mention, I mean. True, no? but we have a very good relationship with ANCO, and uh, Frank Dawson, our secretary, and myself have been dealing with ANCO in Galway, with the ANCO manager. We have a very good working relationship with them now, and we're looking forward to them coming out here and providing us with, uh, with uh, restored coaches, and we're providing workshop facilities for them in return. And as a voluntary body... We're, we are only doing this in our spare time, remember. We're all in, no, in that's professional right, yeah. jobs ourselves. I don't think it's, it's quite our role to question the workings of a state agency such as ANCO. Uh, if we were professional people, maybe working in government ourselves, we would have a right to it. But I think as, as school teachers and, and doctors and technicians and bus drivers and train people and all the rest that we are, we're a very mixed group. I don't think we have the right to question uh, the ins and outs of, of, of Ankle. We're delighted to see them here and uh, I don't want to scare them off. I think now the Ankle money would be a question for the Doyle um, Public Accounts Committee. Yeah, more than for people like ourselves. Well, I, I didn't mean to, that anything should be questioned like that in detail. I just mentioned the fact that there is uh, one to two percent being paid by everybody for youth employment. And, like, uh, well, it'd be nice to know if that money is being utilised, you see. Well, yes, I, 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 I feel the same way. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would like to know that the, the 1% I pay myself is, is going to create jobs. And I would just hope, all That's I can say is that I would hope that schemes like this ankle scheme are, in fact, benefiting from the 1% which the people in jobs are paying. Well, uh, finally, the, now the line from here to Loch Ray. At the moment, is that line still is, is, is in a position to carry a train? Like, or does it need no. the, um, repairs, etc., etc.? Et it was never touched, of course. Unfortunately, it's not. The line closed down on the 1st of November 1975, as you are aware, yes. and no train has run in it since. Yes. And the only train to come in here has been the Sock Special on the 28th of January this year. The line is intact. The rails and sleepers are there. Many of the sleepers are in a very bad condition, very yeah. soggy and spongy, and need replacing. We reckon we'll have to replace about one in three. One in three yeah. The rails are perfect. We have walked the line, we have surveyed it, we have done a detailed analysis of it, and we have spoken to professional permanent waymen on CIE who have assured us that the rails are all right, it is only the sleepers that will need replacing. And it will be up to our own permanent way department and our own members to get out there at weekends and do this once we finalise arrangements with the CIE and the Department of Transport. At the moment, we only have a lease for the section here within the two buffer stops, but we're confident by next year we'll have permission from CIE to start working on the track gradually from here towards Loch Ray. And we're starting this end because it's connected to the main line and we'll gradually go to Loch Ray, probably opening in two stages, one to Dunsandle and the second one from Dunsandle to Loch Ray. Loch Hopefully Ray. being in Loch Ray with a full service over the full nine miles in time for 1990, which is the centenary of the year the line That's opened. Anyway. The problem now with commuting is that, you know, where a time and, st a time and station came into being by the branch, it isn't like the line was built from Galway to Loch Ray. If the line was built from Galway to Loch Ray, or even from Loch Ray Gort Galway, you, you would then have a chance of operating the commuter service. You'd have you'd have a city and two towns in your line. Yes. But right now, I mean, like, there, there, you know, it is, it is a station that came into being from the um, decision to build a branch. So therefore, you know, it wouldn't really be a good commuter. Yeah. Situation as you I mean, like you would want a branch from we said uh, Loch Ray Galway, Loch Ray Galway for for commuter services. That's the problem of commuter services. It is. Well, I was only thinking in terms like you see of, for example, um, you see when this thing is done, you see like, well then there must be something to maintain it to keep it going and to be too bad if it was just so much done, etc., etc., and then eventually it would come to the ground again. You know? Well, as I said I in the like beginning, that. when we're offering a, a service during the summer for tourists or the general public, the local people are quite welcome to use it and connect into CIE mainline trains here. As you're probably aware, every second mainline train on the Galway line, both up and down, stops here at the moment. Yeah. And we hope that CIE will continue to stop every second train or even every train, every train here, here uh, over the next few years. And we are confident that if they do that, they will be rewarded because the extra business will be generated for their mainline trains and the, the receipts of the mainline trains on the Galway line, the passenger seats, will increase. And we would hope that they will continue to keep the station open and um, 
stop as many trains as possible here. Well, we hope to, that your dreams will come through, etc., etc., et and I'm quite sure what I've seen here today that that will be the case. But it certainly would need quite a good deal of hard work, I think, and a lot of cooperation and a lot of organisation to get it done. But certainly you seem to be on the right foot. It does. It, it, it will require two things. It requires money. And even more important than money, we can get all the government grants and state grants in the world and people out here working. And the most important thing in any voluntary group, as you know, whether it's a charity or a railway preservation society or anything, is that you have people prepared to give their free time. And, and since the stock arrived here at the beginning of January, there have been on average four to five people here every single Saturday. And we would hope now that after this tour and the latest issue of our magazine going out to our 315 members, that we will get more members in our association and that we will get more working members here. We will provide sleeping and eating facilities for them here and we would hope that from now on during the good summer months with the better weather we could have anything up to 10 to 12 people here on Saturdays and maybe even on Sundays as well. So you'll have uh, professional apprentices being trained here during the week, working here during the week and then you'll have voluntary members giving their free time at weekends so it could in, in time be a seven day operation here. Uh, well, he'll have a great mixture. Well, all we can do is we wish you all the best indeed. Thank you uh, very much. God bless the effort, and uh, we hope that it will be the success that you're hoping to. Well, thanks very much, Thank Michael. Much. We hope you're not going to matter raising your funds.